This week, we're gonna build this beautiful flagstone patio. So, that's a problem. Play compactor, I got that from Home Depot. This is called M10. Welcome to Project Dad Life, my name is Mike, and if you like budget-friendly DIY home improvements, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and let's get started on this week's project. The first step to this project is gonna be removing any organic material, grass, and mulch, etc. You wanna get down to a hard base layer. Luckily, in Georgia, we have our world-famous red clay. Now I'm gonna check my base for level and make sure it's pitched or sloped for proper drainage as needed. You want to fix any issues now with your base because once you start adding material it's just going to multiply. And the materials for this job is super simple. We're going to deal with rock, sand, stone, and grout. Now that my base is perfect I'm going to use some hand tools, go around, and finish off the edges. One thing we want to address before we get too far ahead is our downspout. I have a downspout coming off the corner of my house right here. I don't want to kick it out into our future flower bed and I don't want it eroding or rolling over our flags on paver. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to bury this two inch PVC pipe a little bit into the ground under this part of the patio and then later down the road I can connect it right here with my downspout and then extend it on this side to go out into the yard. I actually put a little bit of drop in it, that way the water runs off, but I'm gonna put a little bit of drop in the whole entire patio going off into the yard as well. So this pipe is gonna work perfect as a guide for our first two inches of sub base that we have to pack in. So I think the dirt base is complete and now we just have to wait for gravel. I ordered four tons of M10, so hopefully that should be here any minute. And since we decided not to have a permeable patio, this is what all the landscapers and professionals in our area recommended. This is called M10. It's pretty much a crushed granite. It's very similar to crushed limestone. So what we're gonna do is put down two layers of this. We're gonna pack it down with a plate compactor, and then we're gonna get it all level, fill in the holes as needed, and then we are ready for the flagstone. Let's get to work. Of course, a tractor helps out so much for projects, but the M10 being dry, it was actually pretty easy to spread around. I could see it with a wheelbarrow and a rake and a shovel not being too difficult to get this stuff spread out. And even though the tractor did dump it with a bucket, hand raking it was really the only way to spread it out good. So it's been a few days since we worked on the flax on patio. I had to go back and fix a big screw up on the pergola. So check out the video link below and you'll see what I'm talking about. But today we are back on the flagstone. I have the plate compactor. I got that from Home Depot. That was a rental. I think it was about 50 bucks. And then I also have some PVC pipe here. And because of my dogs and my kids and a couple of days of rain, we're now gonna be working on like a wet beach. So this should be pretty fun but hopefully it'll dry out soon. So with these PVC pipes, these are gonna be my screed board guides. Once I start doing that, it'll totally make sense how it works, but we're gonna go in about two to three different layers of this M10, plate compact each layer at a time, and then we get to the final layer, we'll kinda of like fine tune the level, the level of it, make sure we have a good drop, and then we'll start laying our flagstone patio. All right, so busy day, let's get to work. Okay, so that's a problem. This is like pretty much turned into like cement because it was so wet underneath and the play compactor just stopped right when it hit this. Now I got like a big mud puddle. So let's figure this out. Totally not expecting it to make that kind of mess, but it's like the water that's underneath the M10, as soon as you hit it with a plate compactor, the water just shoots up to the top. So I just raked all stuff out. I guess I'm gonna kind of step back a little bit, get a new plan, rake the wet stuff out, 
bring some fresh stuff on top. Hopefully it's dry enough that it'll just kind of add to it and soak it all up and start over. Here's the PVC pipes I use as my screed board guides. Once I got them close, I would set the PVC pipe in there, level it, add my pitch or slope as necessary, place the other one five feet apart, and then use my six foot level, and that M10 moves so easy. Look, you hold this. All right, ready? Pull. There you go. Pull. Pull. This is called screeding. And then you see your hole right there? Yeah. Take this sand, fill it in. Then you can do that. Pull, pull. And when you see a hole, when you see any holes, you gotta say, stop, I see one. Okay, perfect. Grab this and throw it in there. See how perfect it is now? Look at that, smooth. So we have it roughed in, it's all complete. I'm gonna pull the PVC pipes up since I leveled it and use them as the screed and then we're gonna plate compact it. This will be the second to last time. I didn't have a particular shape that I was going for. I kinda, I kinda was just gonna use my material, spread it out, keep my thickness correct, pack it down correctly, and then whatever shape we ended up with, I'll fine tune it, fill in the gaps, and then we'll go from there. So here's where we're at. We got about four inches of the M10 gravel down. I got about 80% of it down on the first layer and I packed that in with a plate compactor. Then I went back and put about another inch on there. The PVC pipe definitely was a trick that helped out a lot. If you can get your dirt compacted down good and then use the PVC pipe, to help with the thickness of the rock layer, scrape it off using the skim or a level, then pack it in with a plate compactor, worked perfectly. And we beat the time frame. In four hours, I was able to get the rental plate compactor back. So now we're ready to start adding our flagstone. One thing I'm gonna add is this sand concrete topping mix. This is actually made for flagstone patios, pavers. It is pretty much sand that has concrete mixed in with it. So you, you mix it with water and you get it wet. But I'm gonna put it out dry. I'm gonna put about a quarter inch or a half inch layer on the top of the crushed granite and this is going to help me with setting my flagstones level because the flagstones are anywhere from one inch to about an inch and three quarters thick so there's a lot of variance on the stone so i'm going to use this as my final topper on top of the crushed granite skim it straight and then hopefully this will give me a little bit of the squish i need and then we can wet it and it'll lock everything in perfect so that is the next step At this point, it definitely became a tedious job, but it also was kind of fun because the flagstones, after a little bit of tinkering, always seemed to find a good home. All right, we're on the second working day and it's going pretty smooth. Um, there's a couple of issues I've been having. There's a lot more variation in the thickness of the flagstone than I was thinking. So keeping them all level and having enough material to either take away or add back in to get the stones level has been a little bit tricky, but I uh, got the knee pads because today is pretty much gonna be like building a giant puzzle. Um, the mortar mix is coming in really handy. I'm using that, kind of spreading it out, maybe about a half inch of material under the stone. And I did not rent a saw or cut off saw to cut these rocks because the hammer luckily is actually working pretty good. If you use the claw party hammer, chip it a little bit and then flip it over and just break it off. Some of the edges to get them to fit perfectly just knock right off with the hammer. So that's working out great. No saw needed. And hopefully we can get all these stones roughed out today. Let's get started.
So the board is completely done now. Keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to do the concrete under the rocks on this border. Typically you would dig into your grass, you know, and that would be your border. So you would kind of run your sand up about an inch from the top of your grass surface. And that's what would hold the flag zone and the material in. I don't have that right now at this moment. I want that step up onto the flag zone patio. So that is the only reason why I'm mixing the concrete and putting a little bit under each of the uh, rocks. That way it kind of gives it something to hold so it doesn't like kind of slide off. Now that border's done, should go a lot faster. So back on the center for the stone. So we're on the last stage of the flagstone, it came out perfect. We love how it looks. Now onto the grout, we have a few options. You can do a wet mortar mix where you pretty much mix it up, put it in a big baker's bag, squirt it all in the cracks. I don't wanna do that just cause it's too labor intensive and I don't think it's worth it. Second option is just dry sand. You can put sand on there, spread it out. It'll kind of wear out over time. You have to keep adding it. I don't wanna do that cause I want something a little more permanent. So the solution to that is a polymeric sand. The only bags I found were these five bags so no one really keeps this stuff in stock apparently so i'm not sure if five bags is going to cover our area that we need so what i'm going to do i'm going to take my leftover mortar mix that i have i have about two and a half bags i'm going to spread that out first hopefully that'll like maybe cut the gaps i need to fill in half and then that will allow the five bags of poly sand to go on top then we'll wet it follow directions on this bag hopefully we'll have enough Not sure if I recommend this yet, but they both pretty much do the same thing. The mortar mix mixes with water and turns out to be a hard concrete. The poly sand goes on top of that. Essentially is my plan. It mixes with water and turns out to be a hard sand. So it should work. Now I'm like halfway through the project. Remember, always use your respirator. Concrete's not good to breathe in. So the mortar worked, it filled the gaps up about halfway. So now I have about an inch to a half inch of gap to fill with this polymeric sand. So I'm gonna spread this out the same way, get a nice even coat, broom it in, and then final touches will be water. This was the final step that the directions recommended before you watered. And I was skeptical at first, but it actually did do a good job at getting everything off the rock surface and leaving it in the grout joints. Now we're just gonna apply the water as recommended per the directions. Huge success with the polymeric sand and the mortar combination. It worked perfect. It's dried out over about two days. It's almost completely dry. We did the three cycles of 30 to 60 seconds, watering it down, let it dry for about five to 10 minutes in between, repeated that three times, follow the directions, it worked perfect. Now the only thing we gotta do is tie back in our downspout with some PVC joints, border this flower bed, add some dirt and plant our flowers, and this patio will be complete.
We're about to set our edge stone and mortar mix to hold them tight. And I'm just gonna pull a string for that, set it at the height I want. And then once I set the bricks in the mortar, they'll all line up to the bottom of that string and it'll turn out smooth and level. That successful feeling of laying out the landscaping when you're almost done with the project, that feels great. We are on the very last to do item, putting these last bit of monkey grass in on this border on the entrance of the flax on patio. But I want to take a second and thank one special person. I wanted to give a shout out to one of the few people I personally know that says she watches every single one of my videos. So Anna Lee, this is for you. I want to plant these monkey grass right here for you. So when you watch this, these will be yours, Anna Lee. She is my niece and very special, and she says she watches all of these DIY videos. So, just giving her a little shout out and thank you for being my number one supporter. But I'm gonna finish these up, get these five plants in the ground. I think it's time for a reveal. Let's do it. Now for the final total project cost. We have our flagstone coming in at two tons. That was $520. Our M10 rock base was four tons. That was $225. We have our mortar mix and the poly sand we used was 160. Our landscape plants and the bricks came out to 240, totaling a grand total of $1,145 to complete this project. And that completes another week's project. Thank you guys for watching. We really love how this backyard transformation has turned out and we still have one more step to complete it next week. So give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and thank you guys for watching. We will see you next week. Welcome to the lab today. Are you good? Yeah. All right. Good job, bud.